what is, what is Jim? What is Jim's really? What is your favorite movie of all time, Jim? Can you put that out know. there? You know, probably Goodfellas. Mm. It's a good one. It's a good one. Score. You know, I've been watching them over with my kid and stuff. Like Casino's a little. You know, if Goodfellas a ten, Casino's like an eight and a half, eight three quarter. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's like. They're brother sister films, though, for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I have a good one for you. If you like uh, gangster films, you should check out The Many Saints of New York. Oh my god, that was good. That was the peak Sopranos. Um, no, I didn't like that that much. I didn't like The Irishman either, it was way too long. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, Pulp Fiction is up there, but you know, I watched it, I watched it the other day. All the way through, it's a little fucking too too much dialogue. Tarantino's mm. famous for that. It's a little slow. It drags a little. You know, it's so typical. Tarantino has a podcast, and we talk about too much dialogue. Every episode is a minimum of two and a half hours. Of course, I, that's, like, yeah. I used to be the biggest Tarantino fan. I just couldn't take it after Jackie Brown and anything after that. Fucking, you know. Robert De Niro walking through a mall parking lot for like four minutes straight with the camera following and nothing happens. I'm like, fucking, when are you going to edit? Cut. Yeah. Bill, Bill, I got to watch that fucking guy making a sandwich for fucking three and a half minutes, cut the sandwich up. Yeah, I can't. Of, yeah of, of course you like uh, Jackie Brown considering certain uh, newsreaders that you used to bang. Well, then she was black too, Pam Greer. T- oh. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the Pam Greer was better looking than Robin Quivers. Uh, just as we're wrapping up, uh, and I and I and you'll never guess the topic I'm gonna ask you about. That you never guessed it at least six separate times throughout the interview. Well, uh, what do you think about Chad and Kevin Brennan? Do you think it's gonna last? Yeah. Can you believe they're back together? What the Bob, was he the one who who facilitated the whole thing? Do you think he brought them back together, or do you think? It's going to blow up like you did before. Uh, almost there. But it kind of goes back to the uh, the gym and uh, the Opie and Anthony thing of you're, you're well known for not getting into fights and feuds with people. But Chad recently has really been because I like the guy and he's, he's I've interviewed him a few times and he sent me the link to the new Chili Peppers album, which was very nice of him. And uh, <clears throat> but he has this problem I've noticed where he get into an argument with someone and go from zero to a hundred to the point that it's, it goes from the friends to now it's a proper feud. And there's these, the steel to morning show guys, but Chad, well, I guess he gets accidentally threatened of the guy's wife, which it's awkward. Watch the guy's wife. Threatened. I, 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 I'll let's just say he was saying that he was going to have sex with the guy's wife, and okay. then right, so, she want no part of it. Okay, so Howard Stern would do that a hundred times, fucking a year. Every Opie and Anthony would do the Opie same thing. Anthony. Anthony would say, "Howard, I'm going to fuck Howard's daughter." Okay, this has been going on for a long time. Now all of a sudden, everybody's sensitive. This generation, oh my god, you can't say that. So that shit, Howard Stern would be like Cindy Crawford. I'm going to, I'm going to fuck you. Watch, I'm going to take <laughs> you away from your man. I'm, he would do that every day to a different woman. He would do it right in front of the guy if the guy was right there. So now all of a sudden, they like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa." Come on. But, if you want to be like Howard Stern and be Opie and Anthony, be rebels, then that shit's going to, you know, that's that's what's going to happen. But with, with you, is uh, when it's Chad's... Fair take. Uh, it's a fair take right there. It is, yeah. But with it is. You, if you want to fuck yeah. around, you don't know. Look, listen, when I, I did one of the... I'm not, being, um, I'm not being sarcastic, Jim. I really mean that. That's, that's I used point. to do the Howard Stern roast, right? My girlfriend committed suicide. And they wanted me to do the roast like three months after that. I said, no, nah, I'm not ready because I knew they were going to go go after that. And I just wasn't ready to hear it. That's tough. And I was like, no, because and I wasn't going to tell a comic, you can't do that. Just tell them to stay away from that. It's all fair game. Wherever you want to go, you go. And I didn't do that roast. And then a year later, I did the next one and they went after it and I was fine. I just wasn't at that time. I wasn't ready to hear it. So I just knew going in, that's what it is. So if you're going to fuck around, you don't know where someone's going to go. Mm. Yeah. So... But we, we, as, as one of Chad's uh, good friends, but do, do you ever think that he should maybe chill out and stop fighting everybody? Because it would be a lot easier for him to just sort of trade insults back and forth and that's it. But he seems to then live stream about it and keep it. <laughs> and I think it is a shame because he, I think, because there's a lot of people giving Chad shit, but I think 
all, all in all, he's a good boy. And even Stevie says that uh, it's it's getting a bit over the top that people are going after Chad. Look, well, Chad I mean, like that's a shit star. He likes it. He likes being in feuds. It's been his whole life. Like people think, oh my God, he's losing and he's losing. Chad's been doing this forever since I've known him. He likes to fight with people. That's what he likes to do. He likes. He doesn't like calmness in his life. So to him, this is fucking, he loves it. This is what he does. He's like, a, he's like the bad guy in wrestling. He wants to fuck. He's the villain. So he's never going to stop. That's just what he does. I don't tell him to do whatever he wants to do. I just tell him, look, whatever feud you have, if I'm friends with those guys, you know, I'm not going to not go on their show because of what you're doing. You know what I mean? So like, go do your thing. But, you know, but that this he lives for this. That's what he likes doing. I just I wanted to bring up really quick this point uh, Husey had kind of brought up like when Chad came to visit you apparently this summer Kevin Brennan hired me to come in to Compound Media that day to be a security guard for him and his child because he was scared that Chad would possibly yeah, run in you know and like I kind of had a pretty good inkling that that was not going to happen whatsoever but I went for it you know I kind of just watched after his boy for a little while uh, while he was fucking around with Anthony you know but why Chad would he hire you you Chad think you're a tough Chad, Chad, look Chad will do it with words he's not going to fucking attack somebody with a knife or kill somebody he was coming up to see Rage Against the Machine we were trying to see him for three years we had tickets for the opening night in El Paso that got canceled so he came up for that he wasn't yep. coming up to go yeah. and we were right by compound media because we took the fucking right. bus into the port authority if I'm not mistaken and walked about us garden so in hindsight it would have been great if you guys all ran in on me and i had to try to like keep you guys yeah, yeah but that, that, none of that i mean all the shit none of that 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 wasn't happening we're going to see fucking rage it was great it was fucking yeah, phenomenal. You're running, screaming and crying in the green room it just <laughs> a fucking mess yeah uh, and he, using, well, why would he hire you to, look, to, to be people give, chad shit. people give chad shit sometimes you know when he comes when he comes at someone hard he's gonna have to you know he's gonna have to deal with it so people are going to keep coming at attacking him if right. he's going to attack right. if he lays low and doesn't say anything he usually goes away but that's what he likes to do so yeah, yeah tell I mean, what why, to do. why would he hire six, stevie lou to be security because if you're so six, tough how come you're afraid of these six uh yeah boom 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 yeah six Got foot six two ten built the fucking irish rap steel 240 like yourself there so i used to do some security stuff in my day but listen Ooh. Like other people say, if you're a comedian and then you start putting your hands on people, you've kind of lost your comedian privileges. Now you're just mm -hmm. a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Use your words to be funnier out with the person and call it a day. Yeah. But look, these feuds, I mean, everybody's like, that's what everyone's talking about. If there's no feuds, everything's boring. That's right. So it's kind of good. Like, you hear what's going on. This guy's doing this or this is doing that. Like that's, you know, that's like our fucking, our, our gossip in the comedy world. <laughs> Yeah. So it's I like mean, if this wasn't going on, then it's like this. Uh, this is boring. <laughs> Chad on Chad on Misery Loves Company is actually very funny. Mm. If it's like just like the WWE, you got to have that bad guy, that heel. He's playing the heel card better than anyone right. else. And and fans it's are responding. all about ball bust, and they bust yeah. his balls and shit like right. that. It's like that's what it's that's what it's about. Like that's always look what ONA did. As soon as Voss would say something stupid, they'd all be over him. They just attack Bobby Kelly about his weight, whatever. So every, we've been doing that forever, you know, the ball busted. So that's what they're doing on Misery Loves Company. Uh, but the one thing we, that we can all agree, though, with Chad's where the line, uh, he never dedicates the podcast to the troops. And I think that's just crossed the line. And just as we're wrapping this up, should we give one last shout out to the troops? Let's give it up for the troops. Come on. I, I wear this hat. this okay. manly blondie t-shirt for the troops and for all the strong women. Debbie, oh, how just yeah, speaking woman. of Pulp Fiction, I got this is my my Sam Jackson from Pulp Fiction. I got this one. This is custom, custom made. It's amazing in that. I it mean, look, like, it, it, it brought like, back Travolta, it brought back Travolta's career. You yeah. know, it also uh, brings a little, back a little too wordy though. A little yeah. too wordy as Jim is a little too a little too much. Like it, you know, <laughs> I watch with my kid a little too wordy. I mean, it was some amazing iconic scenes in that movie, but it's just a little too much dialogue. Yeah. And yeah. that 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 painting also not only brings back memories of what happened with Travolta's career, but that painting image literally looks like Robin Quivers' face after Jim has done skull fucking her. 